Hey, so today, guys, I'm going to be showcasing every single Kagane. I've wanted to do this for a while, but had no way to do it without wasting, like, 50 bucks until Sushi added the storage update, so why not do this now? So, we're going to start with uh, the, the four starters and work our way up. So, let's go first off, Skiyama. Uh, my bad, that's Nishiki. Uh, Skiyama. Yeah, yeah. Okay, forget that happened. Skiyama, with its arm not being attached to my shoulder. Yeah, Skiyama ain't broken at all. So yeah, shoe Skiyama, right here. Yeah, okay. <coughs> oh, click. E. R. J. E. just hits like that. R. You have to actually hit properly. Then F is like the best attack. I have nothing to test it on. Gosh dang it, man. Okay, here we go. Use that. It, it does that. And yeah, very cool. Okay, so I'm a bad. Kauka. Click. R. F. And then the C mode. Shoot. And then the E. And then Toka 2. Basically the same thing, but more shards. Yeah, these starters kind of suck, bro. Oh, by the way, uh, if, if you want to see the, you know, the non-meme ones like this, then just skip ahead in the video if you want. But before you do that, if you do find yourself enjoying this video at all, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. Now, let's get on to Nishiki, so we, and then we'll actually get into Kagade's that fight. Nishiki, uh, Nishiki 1. Click. E. R. F. D Nishiki 2. Click. E. R. F. Then Nishiki K1, which is actually kind of good for just meme PvP. But yeah, it's basically just a, the best form of it. Uh, yeah, click. E. R. F. Okay, now that, uh, it's no longer meme Kagane's, let's uh, actually do the- Okay, well, Kaneki's kind of a meme. You know, the, click. E. R. F. Ah, uh, Kaneki has too many forms. Click. E. R. F. Okay, Ken 3. Not a meme one. So, Ken 3 is actually pretty good. It's got its click, which stuns. The E, which is a barrage, but you have to hold it down. R, which is basically, um, like, second forms R, except much longer. So, you could go like this, click, and then just, you know, whatever. So, yeah, then the F, which, uh, I guess, kind of a decent movement thing. And then, obviously, the R is good for movement as well. Yeah, uh, okay, next. <laughs> yeah, Ken K1. Which uh, slows down the longer you use it. Click. E. R. F. It, uh, sucks. And now Ken K2, which... Uh... Compared to Ken K1, it sucks a lot less. So click. E. R. I'm pretty sure the E stuns. R knocks back, and then this... Just, just a slam. And you can also slide the, or no, you can slide the R. My bad. Sliding R is kind of fun. I don't know why. It's just satisfying. And then, of course, PK. PK got its click, just a typical click attack. Then the E, which you can spam since it has a half a second cooldown. Combined with dashing, makes this the fastest Kagane in the game, and I believe the fastest thing in the game altogether. Then it's got the R. Which, all these moves look like they're in freaking double speed or something. So the R stuns, but you gotta aim it properly. So, like, if I go up to it and then do this, it's not gonna hit it. But then if I go back... Uh, and miss, obviously. Yeah, that was totally part of the plan. Yeah, there, now it hits. Then it's got the F, which makes you go really fast. Kind of like, um... Uh, like, it, like in K1's run. Just for a little bit, and then it does a little slam. You also have iframes during the F. Unlike, um, unlike Taki's F, it's actual iframes. Taki has, like, fake iframes, so true damage gets through it and does damage because it's not, uh, not true damage, it's 100% damage resistance, which is why you can still be hurt while using Taki F. Or still be hit, not hurt. Hinami. Hinami is decent for starter PvP because it's really easy to control. The E, the A, uh, um... I thought that was the F. R. You can also block while attacking. And then obviously the F. 
you know, just like this. And then, uh, and then obviously we got Hina, Hinami 2, which freaking sucks. Click. E. R. F. Then you can't even attack while blocking. So yeah, Hinami 2 sucks. And next we got Tadara. Tadara 1. Decent for grinding bosses. E, uh, click. E. R. F. Not, not very cool. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a 1. Then, Tadara K1. We have click E, which shoots massive range fire, good for annoying the crap out of people. Then the R, which basically just does that around you, and it'll close in. Then there's the F attack, which gotta aim, it'll slam down on the ground, and then you gotta, well, if they survive, it'll punch them forward with an extra attack. Uh, I forgot to showcase the block on most things, so... Might as well do that. Block. Very nice. I just realized I still have my glass Tatara build. I might want to fix that. Okay, testing the F. Yeah, there we go. Uh, super simple. Did like, you know, it does damage. Very nice, very nice. You know, all that, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. And next we have Koshi. So we got the click attack. Just your typical click. Then there's the E, which shoots... Uh, whatever these things are, and does damage. Then obviously the R, which is the ribcage, which will stun your opponent for a few seconds. Then the F, which shoots these little blade things, which come back like a boomerang and can hit a total of twice. And then the C, which um, is much closer range than the other moves, but you can actually slide it, which is really cool. So if you needed to go back, you could do this with it. Sliding it backwards goes further than forward. Whoops, I, I pressed my alt key. That was on purpose. So yeah, you can get some decent distance with that. Combined with, you know, this G. Makes for a uh, decent movement. Then we have the cooler and obviously superior form, Koshi K1. Then the click is now changed to the previous E attack. And it's bigger. Now, the E is replaced with basically a barrage of these little spiral bone things. Which, um, kind of like a machine gun. Then there's the R, which basically has double the hitbox... And will, I believe, stun for maybe a bit longer, if not the same. Then it's got the same sort of F attack, except it's got more. And, you know, obviously bigger range with that. Then same thing with the C, and you can still slide it. It's like this. One thing I forgot to mention was that, um, I'm just gonna keep walking forward while doing the moves. Uh, I already know dashing. If you dash while doing the moves, it kind of slows you down for a little bit. While doing them. So then if we get Koshi, uh, Koshi K1, then uh, you can actually, while using the E, you can do all these moves in, like, really quick succession. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, you can just dash while doing all these moves. Because they, like, it basically does the animation where it slows you down much, much faster. So basically with this, you can spam all the moves within a second. Rather than Koshi 1, where you can't really do that. Next is Lycan. Lycan has your typical click attack. It looks like it's slightly broken. Oh, uh, let me just fix that. Alright, we're gonna ignore the fact that Lycan is completely broken right now. That's cool. So yeah, your typical click attack. Then it's got its E. It does this. And it and you can use it two times before the cooldown has to go, or has to uh, start, I guess. Then there's the R attack, which stuns. And has basically the same hitbox, but goes, I believe, further than the E. Then there's the F, which, when it hits a target, it'll, um, it'll hit them, like, ten times with the claws. Let me sh demonstrate this on Ishiki. Just like this. So, if you wanted, you could just, like, E, E, and this, so they're stunned, and then go in with this, and get a couple more E's in. So, decent combo for Lycan 1. Then next we have like in K1. Please don't be broken. Okay, you're not broken. So, Lycan's attacks are similar, and you can use C to switch from standing up to running on four legs. So with this, the E works the same way, except it only do or it only um or it can only do it once before the cooldown, unless you're on all fours. If you're on all fours, you can do it twice. But then the C is on cooldown. So then there's the R attack, which roars and stuns. And if you're, or, um, 
basically what the armor on you does is stops you from being grabbed. Once that armor's gone, you, you will be able to be grabbed. It also provides some defense, I believe. So basically, Roaring gets your armor back, except you have to be on all fours, otherwise it will not. Then the F attack, which the F attack works the same way as the Lycan 1 F attack, except it does more damage. And then also on all fours, it'll make the C have cooldown, but I'm pretty sure doing it with C does not do anything. And then Lycan also can jump very high and also run very fast. I believe the running is about the same speed as, um, as like, spam dashing. But uh, it was faster before, obviously, but Lycan got nerfed. Which that nerf kind of buffed it in a way, because uh, Sushi, I'm pretty sure, made the E longer, and that's kind of how Lycan fights. You don't really run around constantly. That's not really how you fight with Lycan. So then the combo basically works the same way. You can kind of, like, roar, F, E, E, just whatever. Make up your own combos. Lycan's kind of weird like that. Next we have Edo. And Edo 1. Click, E, R, and the F. And the F apparently does not shoot in this shoot this way. So yeah, nothing much, just the typical of one, except a little better than the typical typical. So then we have Edo K1. Edo K1 has its click attack. Or it's pretty cool. I um I'm not sure if the dash goes any further than a normal dash. It just kind of seems like it does. So then first off we have the E. Just a bunch of shards. Then next is the R. Which you can change the direction of for the second one. Or so you could, like... I could, like, go backwards with this and then back forward. So, say, um... Kind of like with the like and ease, I can do this. And hit twice. Then the next is the... Uh, the next is F... The Man. Can't speak, dude. The next is the F. F will jump into the air and slam on the ground. If, um... You're in the radius of this attack, you will be stunned. And then, you know, you can just... Blah, blah, maybe dash back, shards, stuff like that. Then the last move, the C move. This creates three little ring-looking things around you. If you're hit, it will shoot, like, a single shard at the target. I'm pretty sure if they're, like... Of course it wears off. Okay, so uh, if they hit you, you see little shards come off. Let's have them hit me, like, see if it kills him. There you go. It can't be, like, inside of you, apparently. So then next we have at OK2. And so for Edo K2, you'll have this. Basically, if there was another player in the game, you could select them, or select whoever you want, and then <clears throat> that, pl or that player will have this little icon above their head. I believe it goes halfway across the map, something like that. I don't think it's all the way across, but it's very far. And while doing that, your shards with the E will move a lot faster. Also, with the E, you can just shoot like one, or maybe just two. Before you have to uh, basically re or redo it. So you just like shoot like one. Just like this. Pretty sure it'll have the... Actually, does it go forever? Oh, I'm pretty sure this actually goes forever. So it... the more you shoot, the longer the cooldown. And then if you shoot all of them, then it's the cooldown, obviously. Okay, good to know. Then the, um, the R works the same as at OK1. Then there's the C. If you press the C, you'll jump up into the air. Then we can use the F. The F only works well in the air because it slams down on the ground. The higher you are, the more shards it will shoot. And the longer it will stun. So a lot of people will jump in you C to get a little bit more height, and then you can slam down. You can also use R well in the air to go closer to someone to try and stun them. So, uh, yeah. It's like this. Fly into the air. And hit him. Easy. Now let's move on to Edo K3. Edo K3 is my personal favorite, because Crab is funny. So yeah, here's Edo K3. Got the click. And you'll also notice there's this bar. Basically, what this bar is, is that allows you to use your C. But that's not all. Also, the C is this. C is the laser. Let me just showcase the R and F first. So the R is the same as Edo K1 and 2. Then the F is a slam, which will knock back. So, when you have this this thing full, this little thing full, you'll have this glow around you. Basically, with this glow, your R, I believe, goes further, and your F has a bigger hitbox. Your R also has a bigger hitbox, I'm pretty sure. Your block also blocks more. And, you, and it, I, I forgot to mention that you can move while blocking, 
but can't attack like Hanami. I also forgot to showcase the E. I'm so cool. Yeah, here's the E. It'll shoot a bunch of sh bunch of shards. See, sh I can't talk, dude. So it shoots a bunch. But let's uh let's use up this little effect thing and not get hit by Nishiki. So now if we do this, there will be a lot less shards, as you can see. So basically, keeping that buff will help you a lot during a fight. I'd recommend only using the C if it's a last resort. I also forgot to mention stuff about the jump. So when you jump, it'll jump forward like this, not a normal jump. However, if you look down, it'll do a big jump, just like this. Except that it has a much longer cooldown. So you can easily jump up buildings. Basically, you just you look at your belly and then jump, rather than just looking any other direction. And I believe that's it for Edo. Let's move on to... Um, uh, what's, this, what's our next thing? I forget. Why did I just spawn at CCG? I'm pretty sure ghouls can't do that, but alright. Uh, yeah, I was trying to go to Kagane shop, not, not CCG. Sushi, fix this bug. <laughs> alright, so our third to last Kagane is Taki. So Taki 1 is probably one of my favorite ones. Uh, so basically, they've got the click, then there's the E, which just kind of like, um, Edo ones R. Now we have the R, which shoots, I mean, it's supposed to shoot, yeah, there. <laughs> so it'll shoot these and goes pretty far. It's like, this is a decent ranged one, which is odd. Then there's the F, which shoots this thing and explodes. And it'll explode on impact or if it runs out of range. Then there's the C attack, which does this. It'll jump up in the air and shoot down some shards. You can also jump um, with it for a little bit more range, which is pretty cool. So, enough about Taki 1, let's move on to Taki K1. Actually, good for PvP. So, for Taki K1, you got your click. You know, you're, you're typical. Then there's the E, which, just like this, just like Taki K2, dash forward. The E is, of course, longer than the R. And you can obviously slide these moves. If you guys do not know how to slide, it's super simple but difficult to do for your first little bit of doing it. Basically, you're going to want to dash, jump, and the move basically at the same time. My best way to describe it is do the first W and then press space E and the second W at the same time. So, just like this. So press the first W for the dash and right after the second W... Or right after the first W, sorry. Then I'll press the second W along with E and space at the same time. Super simple and pretty easy to do. I I reckon um you guys will be able to do it, but it might be a little bit difficult at the start to use it in PvP. But also, um if you didn't know to basically you have to have like under 100 ping to slide effectively, otherwise it's gonna just be kind of a waste slide. It's not gonna go very far. Then you need a, around under 200 to slide at all. So if you have above 200 ping, then sadly you won't be able to slide. Now we'll move on to my favorite form of Taki, which is Taki K2. Frankly, I think it's superior to Taki 1. So, typical click, just like this. Then there's the E and R, which work the same way. Which I actually didn't showcase what they do, so let me do that on Nishiki. But um, it works the same way on... On Taki, um, Taki K1. Wait, I... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna just showcase them. I literally forgot to showcase the F and C. So yeah, F will do this. And shoot shards. And then, the C shoots a big shard. Which, when you use the E, will throw the target automatically into one of those. Then if you have one near the target while using F, it'll shoot them... Or it'll shoot the F shards, like, twice as fast. So yeah, sorry about not explaining that. Let's uh, go to Taki K2. So for this, Taki C and Taki F. You can also slide the Taki, um, Taki K2 F. So yeah, it's like this. Works similar to Taki K1's F, except a little bit different. So yeah, and while you're up in the air, while there's a little green circle around you, you have 100% damage resistance, but not full iframes. So yeah, the C... Does good amount of damage, except the further you are away, the more damage it'll do. How did I just shoot there? Alright, so you see Nishki's here. We're going to shoot him like this. Does, honestly, pretty sucky damage. That didn't even hit him. Yeah, just like that. Now we're going to head back here and one-shot him. 
That is if he gets hit. Yep, there you go, he's dead. Oh uh, yeah, let's go find Omon so I can show you guys how to combo with Taki. I have Ejector, so... It's a bit of an awkward combo compared to the Concussor combo, but yeah. We just gotta wait a minute. Alright, here's Omon. So basically... For uh, my combo, I do R, G, C, dash forward, click, E. And then I'll maybe add an F if I can. So now I'll demonstrate that. R, G, C, uh, click, and then I'll try to do the E, but then I'm on stunts me. So the E does this, R does this, and then, you know, C, all that sort of stuff. So let's try this again. I was fast enough, good. So now I'm um, for Concussor, let me see if I can demonstrate that without actually having it. So for Concussor, what you're going to want to do is, um, instead of pressing, okay, so basically, R, dash back, C, dash forward, and press G at the same time. And so Concussor will go with you as you dash. Then you click, dash forward, click again, because Concussor knocks back. So basically, it does more damage. But I have Ejector because that's what I use for Noro and Jason. But it also works for Taki. So, dash with G. The G will come with you. Click as it hits. Then dash forward. Click again. E. And then your R. Well, the E and R are optional and situational. So, use your own, um, use your own discretion for that. And then, obviously, sliding works the same way. Also, um, actually, what I forgot to mention was you can just dash and press R, or, or, or E in the air. You don't have to do do it like this, but it's, uh, it's more effective if you do it like this, but you can get rid of the space if you're already in the air. And what I normally do is I can do this and this, so I can slide twice in one jump. And I, I don't do that with the, with the F because it's a lot less effective. I'll show you. Just like this. Goes about that far. Then I'll use it. I um, won't stop chasing me. Use it like this. It goes quite a bit further this way. Maybe not too much, but it's just more effective that way. So I'll finish off Amon, and then we'll move to Noro. So yeah, if you want to skip to Noro, just skip ahead a little bit. Actually, don't skip ahead. Noro is literally now. Uh, if you want Jason, skip ahead a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm so smart. Now we have Noro. So for Noro 1, you got the click. The E, which will... Basically the same as click, except it pulls the target toward you. That R, which um, is actually somewhat ranged, so I can stand here and it'll auto-aim to that guy. And then click, E and R will heal you. Then the F, just like this, does not heal you as I'm pretty sure it's not a bite. Unless I just suck with it. So then on to Noro K1, which actually has a lot more to explain. So first off, you can't dash or jump with Noro K1. But Noro K1 is definitely a tank. So for Noro, first off, you're gonna like for PvPing, you're gonna be switching in and out of shift lock constantly. So first off, the click, you gotta aim it like this out of shift lock. If you do it in shift lock, it'll aim really far. So unless you got the perfect angle and perfect distance, then having shift lock with it won't work. So yeah, I could just click niche key. Clicking an key will close all your mouths. Basically, if you have a mouth, or like no mouths closed, uh, your, R or your F is going to be small, but with all three closed, it's going to be really big. So here's the small F, and then one mouth closed bigger, two closed bigger, and three the biggest. Click will close all your mouths. I believe R closes, wait. Yeah, R closes one. Yeah, just like that. All right. So then the R... Is the, is the tongue attack, which can grab from a really far distance, and it does two hits, I believe, It'll, for the first hit, and then it hits whenever you grab the opponent, or into your mouth, basically. Because then the combo for this is R, F, E. The E is basically like your typical click, but, you know, it's E. So R, F, E. That's your combo. Then moving on to the C. The C can move anywhere from directly next to you, to all the way over here. If you hold shift lock, it'll move the C as far as you can. But you don't always want to do that. So that is why you can't use shift lock for C unless you just want to quickly get away. So you can use it like this far, or you can do it literally next to you. It also works to just go up stuff like this. So, like, I could go 
No, I can't go there. I can go here. I'd like to just go to the end of something and then go to the end right here to just keep the cooldown as short as possible. But I mean, I could always just go to the end. Okay, I kind of missed, but I could always go to the end of that. It's just longer cooldown. Anyways, basically, I'm a glass Nora right now, and even being glass, you can solo Edo. Every single one of Nora's moves heals. Period. Well, Nora K1, obviously. But yeah, what I like to do, R, F, E, click. But for bosses, I'll do E, R, F, E, click. Because E, you can get the E cooldown back before you're even done with the R, F. And then, I, and then I'll just forget that like I just did. But like as you can see, I'm basically full health in the top right. And Edo is getting close to dying. So if Edo wouldn't be moving so much, I would do R, F, E, G, and then C back to them. Because G will do damage. G won't heal because it's not Noro's move. That's just Ejector. Which I recommend Ejector, not Sacrifice. Because Ejector is... Or like Noro has basically no movement aside from the C. So Ejector is really good for dodging maybe a really annoying attack. Or if... So basically, uh, Narukami hard counters Noro. So if Narukami is coming at you with melee F, you can G away from that if you time it right. That's kind of why it's really good to use Ejector. And obviously, Noro isn't, like, completely melee. The click goes really far. The C goes the same distance as click, and R is decent range as well. Noro's not necessarily melee, but I guess it's more melee than some things. It feels more melee because the movement is so bad. Because most range things need really good movement. Well, not necessarily really good movement, but constant dashing and dodging. Noro really doesn't need that, but should. So, using C and using G, you can get some good dodges in, and then, basically, almost instantly, you have your C back if you do it a short distance. <clears throat> Alright, what, what else do I have to explain for Nora? I know there was one more thing I wanted to say, but I completely forgot while explaining other things. Here, we can, uh, we can demonstrate stuff on Amon. Here, we'll have, we'll have him lower my health quite a bit. And so I can show you guys that all the moves heal. Oh yeah, I gotta hit him first. I, 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 I foregore. Oh, I remember what I was going to talk talk about. The T. Nero's T actually does not block. It's actually almost the opposite. So th this is taking forever. So yeah, we got the... I got the click. Heals. R. Heals. F heals. Does the C heal, actually? I don't know. Yes, the C does heal. So yeah. Everything heals. Aside from G. That's not a part of Noro's moves, so it's an exception. And so what I go away, Amon. So what I was going to talk about next was the T, which would normally be. Are you going to do the animation there? Basically, while doing this, you will take a lot more damage. Basically, say there's a Taka K2 over there using C on me. That's going to do very little damage to me. But if I were holding T, it would do like half my health, like normal. So uh, let's get Amon over here. Oh, wrong button. So we're going to hold T, if he's going to freaking let me. Yeah, we're holding T, and look how much damage he's doing. He's doing quite a bit. Then if I stop holding T, he does a lot less. As you can see. So, holding T, I feel like, if, unless you know no one's about to attack you, then just spam F. Because spamming F actually heals you, like, while you're just using it. You don't have to even hit the target. All right, so let me just get a little bit low and demonstrate that. This took way too long, but here we go. Okay, so now we're decently low. We're healing really fast, but if we spam F, it'll give us little bursts of healing. Now, if we can, let's click Amon, and as you can see, all our mouths are closed. Now let's use F, and it heals a lot more because all the mouths are closed, meaning the F is bigger, and that also heals us more because of that. So now let's move on to Jason. I can't believe this video is 30 minutes long. This took a lot longer than I thought. Goodness. So yeah, I guess I just got caught up in explaining the different Kaganes and how they work and all that stuff. I kind of just basically skipped through the starters, just like, click E, R, F, done. But yeah, I go a lot, I've gone a lot more in depth with Taki and Noro, and obviously I will with Jason, because this is what I mean and this is what I know most about. So, uh... Oh yeah, yeah, I'm a one. My bad, my bad, my bad. Don't hate on me. Okay, so I'm just gonna skip through this quickly. 
The click, pretty simple, and it will knock back. The E, you run a little bit slower than just spam dashing, but you have this constant aura of damage. It all, it's also easily cancelled by most moves. Then the R, which will do this and cause bleed damage. Then we have the F, which uh, actually will stab your opponent, and then the other, the other Kagane, or Tentacle, whatever you want to call it, will flick it off. So basically two hits. And my, my just random combo for this would be R, F, dash forward, click, and then E. Yeah, so as you can see, click knocks back. Die, Amon. Everyone hates you. Okay, enough of Yamo 1. Now for my favorite part of this video, Yamo K1. I love when things don't do animations. So basically, the click is basically the, one of the normal moves. Just kind of like Noro, except it doesn't have any special things like stuns or knockback. It's just a click. So, click does good damage, and it's got a really good range. Then we have the E, which will knock back anything in a, basically a uh, kind of like a crescent moon radius around it. If you wanted, you could kind of like flick it a little. It's got a little bit of... Um, little bit of time before it stops hitting so i could be like hitting here part way through the move and then turn around and still hit it's slightly lingering but only for a split second not like a few seconds or something but yeah then we'll move on to the f i mean the r sorry i'm stupid the r is per is my personal favorite move actually not my favorite the f's my favorite but the r is definitely the most useful so the r will do this it's the longest move and it can hit really far, just like this. So the R will stun for a few seconds. And with the R, it's also slightly lingering. And while doing the R, you can actually turn it. So if I wanted, I could do a whole 180 and just turn it around like that. <clears throat> Which is a little bit difficult to do if you're not used to doing stuff like that. So the next we have the F, but I'm going to need to demonstrate this yeah, you know, on a boss. I bet most of you already know a lot about Jason, so skip ahead maybe 30 seconds, and then I'll get into some more detailed stuff that maybe less people know about. Wait, has Edo been here the whole time? That's nice. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention about the R, actually. You can slide it, if you didn't know. So basically, you... Okay, so if you try to do it like this, it'll pull you down to the ground, because the R actually makes you go down. So you have to basically do W, and then W space and R on the second W. So yeah, I can slide it just like this. Click, E, all that stuff. Now for the F. The F throws the target into the wall. Hey, is it finally working right? No, it's not. Basically what it's supposed to do is grab the, grab the target and put them on the arm. But there's been this weird bug lately where it puts the target on your body rather than your arm. So just look at this. Look, she's on my body, not, not the end of the arm. So freaking cool, dude. Also, you can slide your R backwards, just like this. And that'll actually give you more distance than the regular R slide. So I'll demonstrate that. Normal R slide, just like this. About the same... Dist er, kind of Almost parallel to the human. Now let's do the backwards one. Wait. Am I, am I stupid? Oh, no, never mind. I think I'm just being bad. So, this goes slightly further. I swear it went further. I know it does go farther than the normal R. Unless... Wait. Uh, okay. Screw whatever I, whatever I was trying to say. Never mind. So next, last, we, you know, we have the C. The C is the big jump. Super cool. And uh, with this, you can actually jump and then do the C if you do it at the same time. Then this combined with a dash, almost a slide, but it doesn't actually slide like a slide. But you can go like this and basically jump all the way from there to here. So you can get maximum distance with the jump and the dash with it, which is really cool. So then combine all this together and you got a freaking killing machine. And now let me give you guys one of my combos. So, my combos aren't really like a set combo. It's kind of random in the moment stuff. But 
I basically go for R, click E, and then F. If I freaking hit any of the moves, dang, bro. Yeah, Edo is kind of annoying to test this stuff on because, you know, she's freaking Edo. She's gonna jump around everywhere, so get the frick off. So I'll go like R, click E, F. That's kind of a good combo. If you were really risky, you could go like click R, dash forward, click E, click R. I, I messed that up. The, uh, click R, whatever, you know. You could go for that, but that would be a lot more risky since you're wasting time on click rather than the R. But, I mean, then the F. Frick. So, that might be a bit risky, and they might get away. But, obviously, more damage is more damage, so pick your battles. Like, you could just go R, F. That, that'll work and do it's still a good amount of damage, but going with R, click, E, F, that's much more damage because you're getting two extra moves in. Basically, double damage almost. You know, just depending on how much each of them do, because they don't all do the same damage. And in the or the F hits twice. I'm pretty sure that's the most damage out of all the moves because of that. Oh yeah, about the F. If you, I bet most people knew this, but if you throw someone, it doesn't hit twice. It just hits them when you grab them, and then it throws them. But if they hit a wall or something or some sort of object, it will hit the wall. The game will detect that, and it'll do more damage to them. Uh, I feel like I'm over-explaining a little, like, over-explaining the very basics of stuff, but, yeah. Uh, anything else about Jason? Let me think. Alright, I believe that's all the information about the moves and things, so now let's get on to a couple couple of good PvP tips about Jason. I want to do, do a redo video, because I remember I um, did a video about Jason tips, but that was... suck. So I'll just give you guys a couple quick tips now. So let's go think about a defensive playstyle. Say, um, someone's being really aggressive on you, and you're trying to be defensive because of that. So I'd say whenever you use C to either get away from them or go to them, use E as soon as you're about to hit the ground, and that way, especially if they're adjacent, they're going to try and use E to hit you, or some sort of move like that. If you use E before you hit the ground, you're going to have a big advantage because you used that move before it was necessary. So just like this, you could think like, when you land and then use E, which sometimes will work, but most of the time you're going to need to be very fast. So you can get, using it slightly before you hit the ground is a really good defensive strategy. Even if uh, you don't hit them, you would have. So maybe they see that you're going to use E and they won't attack. But they might attack right after. So um, sometimes what I like to do would be do this and then slide backwards to get away. That is, or that's a really good strategy for maybe, like, jump on them, E, and then slide back. And then, if obviously, if you can't slide, you can use ejector, you know, just, like, jump in with E, and then use ejector and dash back. Because ejector is faster than a dash. Then, obviously, learning about the hitbox is important. Like, pretty, pretty sure that I cannot hit this person from... Never mind. I can't hit them. So how about like this, would I be able to hit them? Let's test that. Because I haven't actually tested this with E. So like this. Don't chase me. That's not going to... Okay. Interesting, interesting. More information I actually didn't know. So... You can basically hit in a 360 with this, I now realize. Yeah. This does actually hit in like a 360. Alright, scratch what I said earlier about it being like a crescent moon. It's literally a circle. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the animation basically does a circle, but not fully. So I guess it's a little bit off, but that doesn't matter. Now let's think of an offensive play style. I guess, um, <clears throat> being unpredictable for an offensive play style and defensive play style is really important. So I'd say more so for, um,. Defensive, but offensive being unpredictable. Well, being unpredictable in general is really good. So, what I'm going to say is don't dash, or sorry, C directly to a person. I think uh, what I would do would be C slightly to the side and then dash toward them. Because then if they say they're adjacent and they try to hit you with R like this, you're going to be here, not here. So they're going to miss. Also, if you go down to the, like, sort of the... Sort of the smaller parts of this, like, they could be trying to use R on me if I come at them, and then I dash slightly to the side, they're going to miss their R, and I'll be right next to them to get a good combo in, just like this. So yeah. 
I, I like I'd say all you have to worry about as a new Jason would be to probably learn how the hitboxes work, learn how you play, and all that. If you'd rather be defensive or offensive. I'd say the best thing to do would be be able to play offensive and defensive. Say, for example, you're fighting a Jason. If they're fighting offensively, you should fight defensively. And vice versa. So if they're playing defensive, going offensive is a good strategy. <clears throat> that is, um, if you play it right. Because playing defensive against offensive is to counter it. Because offensive, offensive against offensive is a bit risky. So, go offensive against defensive, but make sure to look out for the strategy that I gave you guys. So, if they're trying to do this, try and just, like, if they're about to hit you with that, maybe do this. Or maybe use the G... Then, uh, or use the G, then dash forward and R in case you're too far away from them. You know, just plan around it. And uh, if you guys uh, have any questions in the comments about any of this stuff, just let me know in the comments. I'll be the best of help with Taki, Noro, and Jason rather than the others, because I suck with Tatara, Hinami, like, well, I don't suck with Lycan, but Lycan's kind of no skill, so, you know. But, um, I can always help a little bit with countering certain things with certain things that's stuff i have general information about so yeah ask me questions in the comments if um if i don't know the answer or if i don't know how to help you i can always ask one of my friends or i'll just tell you that i do not have an answer and of course if you want to help other people in the comments feel free to do so as well and with all this said that is the end of this video thank you all very much for watching if you enjoy make sure to smash the like button and subscribe and um yeah, it, if you watch through this entire video, you're a legend, and I give you free cookies and, or like, free warm cookies and milk. We gotta go higher than the typical cookies, come on. So, anyways, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.